Hey everybody, so today we are going to be doing some fun upgrading stuff. Uh, I bought a uh, upgrade kit, kind of, uh, basically a heat sink, a fan, and I bought a couple processors. So we're going to take my HP Z820 from a single core, four thread, eight, no, four core, eight thread to dual processor, uh, eight core, yeah, all that fun stuff. So join me and let's get on to the video. Okay, so here is my HP. I have it setting on my desk on a towel and here is all of the equipment that I will be updating, upgrading. So this is the second heat sink that I will be putting in. I've uh, got it off eBay wasn't terribly priced at all. You can definitely see that this was a... Nah, it wasn't used, but how they packaged it, the uh, thermal material kind of looks like... Alright, so I'm not sure where the uh, video cut off the fucking SD card I was using. Didn't like me. Okay, let's put my phone on silent because Damn it. Anyways, the thermal paste was kind of screwed up by the uh, packaging material, so I'm going to replace it anyways with MX4. It did come with some soft pack paste, uh, definitely not using that, and it did come with a fan for the. Uh, fans. <laughs> Duh. And these are my processors. So there's a story but it's not worth going into. Uh, 20, oopsie, wrong direction. 20 E5 2650V1. Um, these have more processing cores so these are the CPUs I'm going to be using. Uh, benchmark wise they do better because there is more cores on this and the clock speed is a little bit higher. Just trying to get it to where you guys can see it. Uh, maybe. Anyways, so we have those for going in here. So let's go ahead and pop this open. So I'm not sure if you've seen the inside of a uh, Z820 before. Am I all the way zoomed out? Yes. So everything is quite modular. We have hard drives. Just push a button. They pull out. Push them in. To access the internals, we have to take off this plate, which is basically thermal zone uh, for the PCIe. And then we have to take out this which is a very ingenious fan system for the CPUs and RAM. So as you can see, woo, we have three blowers, a small fan, and a large fan. So we're going to go ahead and put this one in here. So to do so is fairly easy. This is our fan header that we're using anyways so we need to go uh, that one yes that's one we don't want a lot of slack or a lot of play in this board yeah slack so I should be able to do that and then there we go so Basically, I need it to run the power cord to it first before putting it in. Okay, fan is done. Uh, and the reason I like this is you have thermal zones to keep everything cool, but you don't have fans ramping up like crazy. And now we have our, what the fuck? Sorry, my monitor turned off. Sorry about that. So, our CPU area. 
as you can see, I have done added my RAM because I was planning this video and going through all my RAM and went ahead and just stuck it in. Who cares? You know how to install RAM. So first things first, since we already have an open CPU bay, what I'm going to do is I am going to install this CPU first. That way everything is done before taking this one out. That makes sense? Hopefully. Okay, so I've got my iFixit screwdriver kit and I'm cleaning off the thermal interface material and we are going to go ahead and pop these up. And, okay, so CPU is nice and clean, so we're just going to go ahead and match up our corners and set it down. And then we need to set this down, pull that down, lock it, and then lock this one, right like that. And there we go. Our CPU is fit. So now we need to put some MX4 on it. Okay, so we are going to put some thermal paste on here. And since this is a quite large CPU, I'm going to do a large P. And then we are going to set our heat sink down in here. Set it on the corresponding mounts and we are going to proceed to screw it down. You want to screw it down in a crisscross pattern. And there we go. Heat sink CPU and heatsink installed. So now it is time to take out this one. This heatsink is a T10. Alright, we are off. So now I'm going to go ahead and clean off this thermal paste. So to do this, we need to Unlatch that, unlatch that, and then lift this up. I have my secondary CPU here ready to put in. There you go, second CPU. So all we are going to do is pull this one out, and we are going to place this one in. And set that down, lock that, come on, lock that one down, and lock that one down. Hooray! Okay, CPU's in, so we just need to put our dollop of thermal paste down. Mm. Yeah, that looks good. And we need to go ahead and place this back in here. Right like that. And tighten it down. This is a fairly easy upgrade. Uh, it's just, it takes some time to do it. And you have to be careful and not bend pens and stuff like that like any CPU upgrade, really. I completely failed on my cross um, thingy there. That one wasn't even screwed down.
and there we go. So we have nice tight fitting CPU heat sinks. CPUs are in. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sticks of eight gig and four sticks of four gig. So that's what, 40 gigabytes of RAM. Anyways, let me go ahead and put this back together and we will get a boot up test and make sure everything is copacetic. And there we have it. Our My Z 820 is now upgraded to 16 cores, 32 threads. Hell yeah. It's already boosting fairly well. I forget what the turbo boost is on this, but there you go. Uh, let's do this. Show. There you go. Look at that. Fucking awesome. It's a cheap upgrade also. Hey! So, thank you so much for watching the video. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to get playing around on this. Uh, definitely worth the upgrade. I went from 4 cores to 16. And it was, what, $50? Maybe $70? I don't remember. I've had these CPUs for a while. Anyways, ah!